Now, in a bid to boost the availability of medical professionals in rural areas across Nigeria, the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency has launched a community-based health research and training program. Our correspondent, Amaka Ode Walker, tells us more. Nigeria's 40 million women of childbearing age between 15 and 49 suffer a disproportional high level of health issues surrounding birth. While the country represents 2.4% of the world's population, it currently contributes 10% of global deaths for pregnant mothers. And despite recording successes with the uptake of infant vaccination, eradication of polio amongst others, Nigeria still battles with a high rate of infant and maternal mortality, with only 1.8% of primary health care facilities in the country having the minimum number of required skilled birth attendants. To support the strategy's implementation. To check this, the federal government has introduced a community-based health research, innovative training and services program, CRISP, that will leverage on the rural posting of resident doctors from teaching hospitals to boost and guarantee the quality of care at the primary health care centers. In the last four years, we set out very clearly that we had a four-point agenda uh, in at the National Primary Health Care Development Agency. One, to eradicate polio. Two, to improve routine immunization. Three, to improve the financial management processes at MPACDA. And four, to revitalize primary health care. We've been able to eradicate polio. We've been able to increase routine immunization from 33% to 57%. We've been able to restore uh, the uh, global standards when it comes to financial management processes, revitalizing primary health care. This is uh, work that is in progress. We've been able to make sure that at least 6,000 of the initial 10,000 that we've identified are now functional. We have about 25,000 primary health care centers. So there's still a lot of work that needs to be done. While medical brain drain continues to pose a challenge to the nation with over 5,000 medical doctors moving to the United Kingdom in eight years, the remaining doctors prefer to practice in secondary and tertiary hospitals in urban areas. Now, with the CRISP program, the government plans to engage over 3,000 medical professionals in six months. Doctors and midwives from all tertiary health care centers will be trained and deployed to various primary health care centers, especially in rural areas, which would go a long way to ensure that Nigeria attains universal health coverage for all, especially rural dwellers. We do have a problem of internal brain drain, internal brain drain from the rural areas to the urban areas. So brain drain is not only when you go outside, but it's also a problem that is domestic uh, and which we must find ways of making uh, differently. CRIS is a new partnership among the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, uh, tertiary hospitals, federal medical centers, the state primary health care boards, and uh, the local governments, and I'm happy that uh, the local government is here because they are very, very close uh, partners here in realizing this. And of course, the communities themselves. Amaka Ude Walker, Arise News. We're joined by the Executive Director of the National Primary Health Development Agency, Dr. Faisal Schwab. Good to see you and thanks for your time. And, you know, basically when it comes to issues, uh, listening to Amaka and listening to that report, every time I see children and women and children, mm -hmm. uh, and I say, first, I'm not a doctor, this, I'm in pain and concern, then this should be uh, more of a pain for you doctors. Now, uh, let us in on specifically, uh, let's speak about the brain drain uh, the uh, your colleague uh, the minister also spoke about the local uh, yes the local yeah the local brain drain yeah, because yeah. once we thought uh, uh, another colleague of yours uh, another mm -hmm. minister once said that we had more than enough doctors uh, uh, dr chris and Giga, and i mm -hmm. asked him that last week he still insists that we still have enough doctors now speak to us uh, how we're working to bridging the gap so uh, for us at the primary health care level we recognize that uh, if you're going to uh, transform healthcare delivery in Nigeria, you have to start from the basics, from the foundation. And the primary healthcare system is the foundation of any strong and vibrant health system. 
uh, when you look at the indices uh, across uh, maternal and uh, child debts, you find that uh, despite Nigeria's uh, you know, uh, huge economy, uh, we're not doing very well in terms of those indices. Uh, this is why, uh, instead of just complaining about the problem, the fact that only about 27% of primary health care centers uh, have adequate uh, uh, health workers. Uh, the fact that we still have a number of uh, primary health care centers uh, that, are, that do not have the infrastructure. What we've thought about is to work with uh, different stakeholders. So we've been able to engage uh, with tertiary institutions like teaching hospitals, federal medical centers. Uh, we've been able to engage with states uh, and local government areas and say, look, uh, we need X numbers of primary health care workers. Uh, the states are not recruiting at the rate at which we'll be able to cover the gaps. So instead of twiddling our thumbs and just waiting for the problem to solve itself, uh, we have now brought in uh, the resident doctors uh, that are in training in the teaching hospitals. Uh, we've also been able to engage with the National Assembly and we'll be given provision uh, to recruit more uh, nurses, uh, midwives, community health ex extension workers, and additional doctors so that they'll be able to work in the primary health care center. What that means is that mm -hmm. you're able to actually improve the quality of the service at the primary health care center. You're able to do research, which is practically non-existent right now. And then when you talk about uh, the uh, mentorship that uh, these doctors uh, bring to the primary health care system, we're looking at a situation whereby in the future, uh, we'll be able to carry out you know, minor surgeries in the primary health care centers. Mm. So uh, between <coughs> now and the end of uh, 2023, we're looking to recruit um, over 3,000 uh, 800 uh, you know, uh, uh, skilled birth attendants, uh, but we're not stopping there. Uh, we're looking at uh, all the way to 2030, and by between now and 2030, we're hoping to be able to recruit over 25,000 uh, more health workers so that Nigeria can rapidly uh, begin to yeah. get on the uh, right. journey towards achieving sustainable development goals and achieving universal health coverage. Fantastic, very great uh, vision, but just like uh the health minister, Ehanire, said there about, you know, uh, internal brain drain. And you are looking at, you know, the pool from the tertiary and secondary uh, you know, health right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What exactly are the incentives that you're bringing to the table to encourage this, you know, uh, doctors and nurses and healthcare workers to actually, uh, you know, go to the rural areas to provide health care? Right. So, uh, while there's a huge problem of uh, brain drain when doctors and nurses leave the country, what we're now doing with the launch of the CRISP is actually brain gain because we're gaining, you know, very competent workforce from the teaching hospitals to the primary health care centers. And what is it, you ask, that we're bringing to them as incentive? Uh, so we're providing them uh, with uh, logistics. We're providing them with uh, an environment that is more conducive. We're also providing them uh, with an opportunity to conduct research in the primary health care centers, right? And being able to actually gain experience at the primary health care centers through the rural posting is a requirement uh, for them to be signed off to become consultants. So there is a lot for them to re look forward to when they come and work in the primary health care centers. Will you be working in tandem with the states and local governments? Because, hey, tesh, I mean, primary health care has to do with the local. Without a shadow of that. What, what kind of support are you getting from them and how are they responding? So this is a multi-sectoral, multi-stakeholder engagement. Uh, if you uh, were there today at the, the launch, you'll find that the commissioners for health were there, uh, the executive secretaries of the state primary health care board, and even you know the association of local government uh, chairmen were, were there, making sure that all partners, uh, donors are aligned around this single uh, vision that we have to bridge the gap when it comes to human resources because that is the single most important gap when it comes to uh, the way we deliver uh, primary health care. And what are the states uh, contributing? The states are contributing uh, the primary health care centers. Uh, the health workers that are in the primary health care centers are being paid by the states and the local government, right? So for this uh, program, every single uh, partner has a role to play. The federal government is not going to be there forever. Mm -hmm. So what we've also done <clears throat> is to make sure that we've plugged in a sustainability bit uh -huh. 
Fantastic. You, you, you know, I like the way you put it in a very subtle <laughs> way and yes. also, uh, well, diplomatically, politically, because uh, quite frankly, uh, a lot of people watching us today don't know that the federal government is actually coming in like the big brother to savage situation when we talk about primary health care. Mm -hmm. A lot of people still don't know that they are local government, that that's why you have a councillor, that's why you have a chairman, and that's why you have a state governor uh, who's also getting ready to get uh, the huge, uh, you know, take home pay as a severance. But now let's speak uh, more about what the federal government is doing to bridge that gap. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, apart from the facilities which you spoke about, it is not in every part of this country you get to see those facilities. There are places, uh, Doctor, I'm quite sure. In most places, uh, they're run down. Now, now we're talking about NYC 50 years. I know how many NYC doctors have gone to such villages would not a roof, let alone mm -hmm. a standing place for them to actually, you know, see patients. So how is the federal government uh, conversation with the states uh, and their local government going in those places that are in dire need? You're absolutely right in terms of the state of disrepair uh, of some primary health care centers across the country. Uh, but this has not happened in the last eight years. This has happened as a result of uh, two to three deca decades of underinvestment, right? Not enough money has been put uh, in the primary health care system. And this is what led to the uh, establishment and the enacting of the 2014 Health Act that gave rise to the Basic Health Care Provision Fund. So for the very first time in our history, uh, we now have a fund which is 1% of the Consolidated Revenue Fund that provides resources directly to the primary health care center. Directly. Directly to the primary health care center. So for the first time uh, in you know, our history, uh, a primary health care center on a quarterly mm -hmm. basis gets about 300,000 Naira to be able to do the small things you're talking about. Underscore very yeah. quickly before we let you go, just 30 right. seconds. Yes. Underscore the issue of sustainability because, you know, one thing that's lacking is that, you know, continuity in governance. How do you ensure that when this administration is out of the way going forward that your vision for this uh, crisp, you know, is sustained and even improved upon? Yes, I have no doubt that uh, we stand at the point of inflection in uh, our life as Nigerians. There's a lot of optimism about what the next government will do. As we all know, government is a continuum. So we are very, very optimistic uh, that the next uh, government, the next Minister of Health, will have to look at the situation and say, in the next 100 days, what am I going to do to transform primary health care? And these are the answers that we're providing uh, starting today. Already. Fantastic. Yes. Dr. Faisal Shuaibo is Executive Director, National Primary Health and Development Agency. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank and uh, we're looking me. forward to this very much.